This segment is brought to you by Virginia 811. Remember to always contact Virginia 811 before you dig. Learn more at va811.com. Welcome back to Living 757. Now, I gotta preface this with both of us were supposed to be wearing dinosaur costumes, but somebody, Patricia, forgot to buy a dinosaur costume, so she's wearing something else that was alive during the same time period, a cockroach. Yes, I'm a sexy cockroach. <laughs> I have heels. Now, now, most of us have done some digging in our lives, whether it be digging for a garden, playing in the dirt, building a sandcastle, or something else, but very few have had the pleasure of doing the kind of digging that our next guest does. Please join me in welcoming Emily Cable, a PhD paleontology student at Virginia Tech. Hey, Emily. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, first off, OMG, dream job. Can you tell us how you got into paleontology? Sure. Um, I've always been like a dinosaur kid, obsessed with dinosaurs. Um, and I decided I wanted to be a paleontologist when I was about four years old. Um, but I sort of went a bit different on my career path uh, until I was 18 when I realized I was right the first time round. And I went to university to study paleontology at the University of Bristol in the UK. Um, and it's just been paleontology from there on. Doing pretty much anything else makes me miserable. So um, I'm here to stay in paleontology. <laughs> That's so cool. And you actually have my other favorite thing behind you, sharks. <laughs> I don't know, have I got sharks yes. in there? <laughs> I've got lots of marine reptiles and uh, animals that lived in Bristol uh, during the Jurassic. But I'm, there's ichthyosaurs, there's, mo there's um, uh, pliosaurs. Uh, please your souls and things. And yes, there is a little shark there, I see. yes. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that is amazing, Emily. But what exactly uh, paleontology does? Like, uh, it is really what we saw in the movies in Jurassic Park. What is exactly the job? So paleontology is the study of ancient life. So paleontologists don't necessarily need to study dinosaurs. Um, they can study anything from sort of geochemistry and the earliest life forms all the way up to sort of more modern animals. Uh, we're essentially just looking at what the past can tell us, uh, what the rocks can tell us, and the things preserved within the rocks can tell us about ancient life. Um, and sometimes how this can help inform us about what might happen in the future as well. Uh, looking at trends in the past and what we can apply to the future too. So you actually dig into the dinosaur that you have a chance to pull up a teeth, <laughs> something like that? Oh yes, I've recently come back from a month in Petrified Forest uh, National Park, um, digging in the dirt there, which was really, really cool. We found lots of teeth, um, uh, lots of cool things. I think probably my favorite find that I made right at the end of sort of the last day that we were at one of our sites was a potential dinosaur tibia, so a shin bone um, wow. that I'm currently working on preparing in the lab. That, that's, it's really cool. That is oh amazing. My gosh, you're living like my little girl dreams. Now going back to the field work you just did, when you sent us information, you said that you were looking for Triassic microfossils. Can you tell yes. our viewers why they're so important and why what they mean in the grand scheme of things? So the Triassic was a really turbulent time in Earth's history. So the Triassic started off the back of the biggest mass extinction of all time, where over 90% of life was wiped out. So we've got this recovery period in the early Triassic and through to the middle Triassic. So this is taking tens of millions of years to recover from this uh, extinction. And during this time, we're seeing a lot of environmental changes. So a lot of the Triassic is very hot, very dry, uh, apart from when it was raining for 2 million years straight and then going back to being hot and dry. Uh, we've also got the beginning of the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea. So when all the world's continents were sort of smushed together in one uh, big continent, we're getting this breakup. And all the animal life is uh, really interesting during this time as well. It's reflected in um, the animals, uh, all this environmental change. So uh, this is when the dinosaurs are first appearing. But uh, throughout the Triassic, it's more the crocodile relatives that right. are more dominant at first. See? So we're looking at this ch interchange in faunas uh, and how this is uh, changing through time, how diversity is changing through time. And that's really what we're looking at when we're looking for these microfossils, very, very small fossils that can tell us a lot cool. about animals. Well, Emily, um, our time has sadly run out. It went by so quickly, but thank you so, so much for joining us. 
and we're definitely going to follow along and keep up with your awesome and interesting work. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.